In the last couple of videos we've looked at correlation for measuring the association between two quantitative variables and in this next sequence of videos we're going to look at simple linear regression which is used to model the linear association between two quantitative variables. So let's look at some data and let's look at a scatter plot of the data. So this is a study of 32 male lions of known age in Tanzania and the researchers also measured the proportion of black pigmentation on the lion's noses and the idea is that in the future they might be able to uh, measure the amount of the proportion of black pigmentation on a lion's nose and use that to predict or estimate the lion's age and so that strategy will be successful if we can build a model, a, a good model that does successfully uh, relate the uh, proportion of black in a lion's nose to the lion's age. And so we can see from the scatter plot there does appear to be an association between the two variables. Uh, the younger lions down here in this part of the graph do seem to have less black pigmentation in their nose uh, compared with the older lions up here which tend to have a higher proportion of black in their nose. So let's, uh, let's estimate the simple linear regression model. So when we say let's estimate the simple linear regression model what we mean is we're going to estimate the equation of a straight line that goes through the data. And that line is, is the regression line and if we're thinking of using the predictor variable to predict the response variable we could think of for example if, if the line if I'm tracing the line out like this we could think of this point on the line here when the proportion of black is 0.4 that would give rise to a prediction if, if where my arrow is pointing now is on the line on the regression line looks like a proportion black equal to 0.4 would lead me to estimate or predict that lion's age to be 5. So each point along the line gives us a prediction of the response variable for a fixed value of the predictor variable. In the sample data we have observed values of the response variable for particular values of the predictor variable. And so if we take the difference, so for example this point here that I'm pointing to, so if I take the difference between the observed age for that lion and what we would have predicted the age to be for that lion based on our simple linear regression model, so I'm taking the difference between where my arrow is pointing here and I'm imagining that the regression line is, is somewhere along here, see, see here maybe. So that difference, that's known as the residual for that lion and we could calculate the residual for all the lines in the sample data. So let's pick this one here say. So the regression lines coming down here somewhere. So the residual here would be negative because the observed age is actually less than the predicted age. So some of the residuals are positive, some of the residuals are negative. If I take those residuals and I square them and then I add up that sum of squared residuals I get something known as the residual sum of squares or sometimes it's called the sum of squared residuals uh, but it's a, a single number that summarizes how close the points are to the regression line and the simple linear regression regression line that uh, we're going to end up estimating is, is the straight line that makes the residual sum of squares the smallest it can possibly be. So it's sometimes referred to as the least squares line because of this. And it turns out that uh, we can use 
calculus to figure out the equation of that line such that it minimizes the residual sum of squares. So we're not going to do that calculus in this course. We're just going to rely on the results. And the results give us formulas for the slope and the intercept of the simple linear regression line. So we can go through these, these calculations. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on the formulas here. Uh, but if I just run this code, we'll get a value for the estimated slope and a value for the estimated intercept. So 10.64712 for the slope and 0 0.8790062 for the intercept. So those two numbers um, tell us the equation of, of the regression line. So that's one way to get the equation of the regression line is to run through these calculations. Uh, an alternative which is what we're going to use in practice from this point on is to use the LM function. So LM stands for linear model and we used it before when we looked at analysis of variance models. The way it's, the syntax works is we put the response variable first and then a tilde symbol. So the tilde symbol is usually in the top left corner of the keyboard and then we put the predictor variable after the tilde. So that fits the model and then we can summarize it and we can read off there's the estimated intercept and there's the estimated slope. Let's actually add that line to my scatter plot. So there is the simple linear regression line on the scatter plot. So let's just finish up by thinking about what these numbers mean. So what does this number actually mean? So I'm, I'm saying that this is the estimated intercept. So if I was to extend the regression line as far as a predictor value of zero, so that's going to be over here somewhere, I think. So maybe where my arrow is here. That would be the predicted age for a lion with uh, no black pigmentation in their nose. So a proportion of zero. We would predict the age of that lion to be 0.879 years, so not quite a year old. But we have to be a little bit cautious when interpreting the intercept because we need it to make sense if, if we're going to make that kind of interpretation. And I'm not sure, because I don't study lions, I'm not sure if there is such a thing as um, a male lion in Tanzania that doesn't have any black on its nose. We certainly don't have any lions like that in our sample, because the lowest value of, of uh, the proportion black is looks like it's about 0.1. So we don't have anything down here. So practically speaking, I'm not sure we can really interpret the intercept to say that we would predict a line with zero black in its nose to have an age of 0.879 years. So the 0.879 is necessary in the model because it anchors the line. It tells us where where it would cross the, the y-axis if we extended the x-axis down to zero. Uh, but it may not have a practical meaning. Let's look at the slope, see if we can make sense of the slope. So the slope is rise over run. It's how much we expect the response variable, the y variable, to change when the x variable, the predictor variable, increases by one unit. Let's think about that for a second. What would it mean for the proportion black to increase by one unit? Well, it's a proportion, so the only way we can get a proportion to increase by one unit would be if it went from zero up to one. And both those extremes are not represented in this sample data set. So we're going to need to think about this a little bit harder to make sense of this number. Uh, what if instead we thought about the 
change in the response variable, the y variable, if the x variable, the predictive variable, was to increase by 0.1 units. So let's say it goes from 0.4 to 0.5. So on the regression line, if we're going from 0.4 up to x equal 0.5, so we're going from here to here, how much does y increase? How much does age increase along the line when we go from 0.4 to 0.5? Well, if we divided the slope by 10, that would tell us how much expected age increases by. So it would increase by 1.06471 years. So that's how we would interpret the slope in this case. We would say when the proportion of black pigmentation in the lion's nose increases by 0.1, we would expect or predict the age of the lion to increase by 1.06471 years. So that's uh, an introduction to a simple linear regression model and we've gone through uh, drawing a scatter plot of the data with the response variable on the vertical axis and the predictor variable on the horizontal axis. Uh, we've talked about finding the equation of the simple linear regression line, the least squares line and so that means finding the estimated intercept and the estimated slope and that allows us to draw the regression line on the scatter plot and then we have finished up by thinking about what do these two numbers actually mean. So in the, in the next few videos we're going to explore this model in a little more detail.